Um, I wish I had spoken before Johnny, actually. Um, but now that I have, I think I have nothing to say. Um, um, well, I'm glad that um, you ditched the question um, that you'd posed, will the ANC r rule until Jesus Christ comes? Um, because I would have gotten into a very long debate about my discomfort um, deriving from feminist humanitics, uh, but also um, uh, a, you know, contemporary and, um, and historical politics around um, leadership that takes itself or that is taken to be um, ordained by the powers above. Um, how do we read the, the past elections? It's very intriguing to me that um, throughout this conversation, uh, there is a tilt towards not seeing rural South Africa as in, a, in disaggregated ways. Um, he, you know, Johnny has spoken about the impact of the of 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 the strikes and the fear of violence, um, but that really is in Eastern Pondoland in the main, um, uh, in terms of your concentration. And I've, I always find it very fascinating the way we talk about South Africa. The drop in the metros means something, but you know what? Um, the, the fact that the ANC has gotten the rural vote, Adam says it's going to go, probably there's a possibility that it's going to go the ZANU-PF way, as if rural South Africa is one um, um, homogenous and monolithic um, space that is inhabited by people who think and respond and feel the same way. Um, let me start by saying, I'm going to be very brief, let me start by saying, as long as elections and the conversation around elections is determined by the ANC, as Johnny has said um, correctly, as long as they frame both the parameters of the conversation and the content of the conversation, I think that they're going to win. Uh, by slim majority, perhaps, there are going to be drops here and there, but I think that when they, um, if our imagination is um, limited to what the ANC wants to talk about or any other political party for that matter, I think that they're going to win because they're going to be able to dodge the more serious issues that um, might lose them um, the, 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 the kind of support that they would want to get. Um, the, the second issue for me is that, frankly, whether the ANC rules until the next century, it doesn't bother me. I don't subscribe to the dogma of circulating power amongst the elites and that if you have a different political party, then you have more democracy and that is vibrant and so on. I, I don't subscribe to that at all. The question for me is what kind of ANC or what kind of political party and what kind of democracy, the quality, the question that you're asking about, the quality of democracy, the implications for the quality of democracy. And I would like to suggest that the quality of democracy in terms of the kind of work that I do, in terms of the experiences of the people that I, that I interact with in, in other parts of rural South Africa, including Pondoland, but also in the, in the more middle, more dry part of South Africa, the quality of our democracy is very poor. But when I compare um, that place where I come from, which is Gofumbaba, and, and I compare where that place was when I grew up, and where that place is now. Poor as that quality of democracy that we're talking about and quality of life is, I am very sure that the NC doesn't have to speak loud or doesn't have to dig deeper yet in memory to say this is what we've achieved, this is what we have done. So when they frame the conversation, they frame the conversation in a way that um, obscures the very, very complex issues um, that um, that might, in fact, force them to lose support in, in rural areas. The, the second issue for me is that whether the ANC um, wins election or loses them, as I think it's given, it depends on what the electorate thinks. And what the electorate thinks is also dependent on what it is that is being amplified. So 
I want for a minute to talk about how we obscure and we do not understand and we do not think it's worthy to understand the complexity of rural life in South Africa and the ways in which at the level of democracy, the ways in which the laws that are being reproduced that are, that are taking them back, the way in which people are becoming more and more impoverished, our inability to understand the relationship between land and mining, the rationale between the land restitution bill that we have had, that we have, um, uh, which has been passed in parliament, and, and the ownership of resources. Uh, Malima um, can be as demagoguery as he wants to be, or can be, as, and any left can be as left as they want to be if they don't understand the fact that in Gonyama Trust, when King Zolitini says, I will get all the children of Uzulu, all the people of Uzulu to make one claim, one land claim, he, and we will, as in Gonyama Trust, we will divide that land fairly. It's a play on identity, we think, it's a play on history and memory, we think, but actually it's much more shrewd than that. If you look at the kind of vast tracts of land that Ingonyama Trust owns, which is where the economy and the future economy of this country is, um, we are missing a point. The metropolitans are in the long run not going to be where the rich, the wealth of this country is going to be coming from. Uh, the, the, second, the third point for me, therefore, is the way in which the opposition itself fashions itself in the image of the ANC, says something about the power of symbolism and the power of um, the presence that the ANC has. So we have two leaders, the leader of the ruling party and the leader of the opposition party, out dancing each other on the stage and out singing each other and both actually being extremely irritatingly off tune, <laughs> but being extremely uh, entertaining and um, or embarrassing or cringeworthy if you if you are fussy like me, right? So and and you find a situation where the DA is not able to say this is what we stand for. So we we fought for struggle too. Remember, we also have. So in my view, it it shows the extent to which the ANC narrative has captured the imagination of South Africa. Um, and, and, and the extent to which it's very difficult for people to think about today's politics, today's life in, 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 in ways that, that transcend that, ima that, 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 that imagination. Finally, like Johnny, I believe that the ANC is felt much more powerfully on an everyday life in parts of rural South Africa than it is in, 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 in some parts of urban South Africa. Uh, my sister uh, says she went to vote and what she did was that she couldn't bear voting for Jacob Zuma. So she put a thumb on the face of Jacob Zuma and then she voted for the ANC, <laughs> right? Uh, so I say to her, so, um, Honestly, it's on Facebook. I said to her, so what the hell, what the difference does that make? And then she says, well, I don't know, but the thing is, I, you know, Helen Zillek grates my uh, whatever. And, 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 and I said, yeah, but uh, the thing is that you assume that the problem is with, Hel with Jacob Zuma. She says, look, I know. But, and I, she didn't, she, she makes it very clear. She says, I didn't vote for the ANC because I lacked options. I had an option. And the option I had was not to vote. I voted for the ANC because I have a complex relationship with the ANC. I could ask anybody here to talk about whether you have not lived in a dysfunctional relationship, knowing that it is very dysfunctional, that actually the best way is for you to leave. Um, but for some reason or the other, you've not actually gotten to the point where you need um, to, 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 to do so. And actually, quite frankly, divorce is very expensive, right? And uh, political divorce is also, it's very costly at emotional level, at psychological level. So I think it's an issue that, that we need to understand at a much more nuanced level than we have. The, the fear that people have of mine workers' strike in the part of um, Eastern Cape that I come from, 
manifests itself in different ways. I come from a generation that received bodies and bodies and bodies of dead mine workers, of women who sat at the feet of rows and rows of women who sat at the feet of um, coffins of, 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 of people who were killed in the, in, in, in the mines during Ngata, NUM, during um, uh, even you know, mine violence, the scabs, and so on and so forth. So what labor uh, may consider to be a powerful tool for themselves um, sends different messages elsewhere. Um, as you were thinking about Nusa Hill, I was thinking about Bull Hook, actually, um, and wrote about that after Margana. And it is interesting to me that in mainstream conversations, those kinds of, those kinds of associations that people were having with Margana at deeply spiritual level in rural Eastern Cape, they did not feature. So I believe that the kind of leadership that we get, I'm talking now to us as uh, middle class and above and so on, uh, the kind of leadership that we have is in some ways the kind of leadership that we've produced in the myths and mythology that we continue to produce. Thank you.